about and heaven and heaven are not just 50 and 50, but uh, heaven is more like 80%. And uh, even though there is a, a place called hell, it is more like a hospital for sick souls, yes. or like or, or like a detention place, some kind of a training ground. P- the people of unfor- the souls, unfortunately, who uh, fell down to the the plane called hell, is because they didn't number one, they didn't believe in the Creator or God, and number two, most importantly. They didn't believe that they are part of God. The important thing is that as a children of God, all people across the universe, I mean across the planet, we all share the same Father spiritually and we are all equally precious as children of God. Absolutely. And Master Okawa uh, mentions quite often in the book about the real world, which is above this third world, a physical dimension. And he discusses Mm -hmm. the different layers, fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and so (laughs) on and so on. And the great description of the type of beings that exist there and how they interact with our physical world. Uh, So tell us, in your own words, the real world, is that heaven? Yes. Yes, it is. You know, in my world, it's heaven, but where our souls are originated or where our soul has the original home is. Because think about this lifetime. Uh, Even though we want to think this lifetime, physical plane, as as an eternal place, but the one single law, which is called the law of impermanence, no one can stop this law. No one can stop the clock. Everything has a clock attached to it in this lifetime because we 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 grow, grow older. We eventually have to pass away transcend. to the other side. Yeah, yeah. transcend. Yes, yes, yeah. transcend. We no don't die. Mistake. We don't die. We <laughs> yeah, just, we don't die. The know, soul just lifts up. <laughs> yes, that's right. We don't stay here eternally no. because the reason why everything is so impermanent in this lifetime is because there is an eternal place up there in the other side. But the reason why we re- repeat reincarnation is because this physical plane is a very dynamic, diverse soul training ground. So it, it is a precious opportunity for every one of us to to go through our soul training and for through the different experiences we're interacting with people that who, who we never associated in our heavenly plane yes beautifully it, it's, said. A, it's a very di- dynamic yes yes that was perfectly said it's an opportunity for self-investigation yes. and for emotions yes. to master all we have yes. to have all emotions we have to That's flow right. through emotions and that is part of the experience of this physical world now we're also yes. walking through the developmental stages of love there's nurturing yes. love forgiving love um mm-hmm. um uh love incarnate and true love so tell us something about love because everybody yes. wants love everybody needs yes. love but everybody <laughs> doesn't really understand yes, that that right. we, we ourselves as souls are love yes and we don't yes. have we, to we find are... it we are already <laughs> it so tell yes, us about we are, that we are embedded we are actually embedded with love we were created by love but and yet while we are dwelling in a physical body because it's almost like a blindfolded we think love is to take however as a spiritual being we know love is to give so which is completely opposite so the part of the soul training of the reincarnation is how much we can grow our love or the capacity and the quality of love to others. How many people we can love and nurture and forgive. So there are different stages of love, love that gives, love that nurtures, and love that forgives. 
for as for the human endeavor, these three steps are the most important thing, and uh, the ultimate goal for every one of us on this this planet is to master the forgive forgive giving love, which is uh, quite difficult. However, as we grow older and and then we go through many experiences, we become much more. How can I say more embracing, and we can accepting. we can learn to forgive. Yeah, we yes, can be accept, more accepting. Yes. Right. Yes, accepting and, and, and uh, ac- understanding. Yes. And then we realize we don't really have any enemies. You know, That's right. we just have yes. people with different perspectives or different missions yes. while they're here, and no one's perfect. So, of course, we have to allow and accept everybody to develop in their own yes. time. But I, I liked uh, that we also discussed in the book fundamental uh-huh. love, which is yes. a, a, a family love, a, a, yes. a spousal love, a friend love. Yes. And and yes. there were other stages, you know. A nurturing love has to be mm-hmm. um, is not able to be given by everyone because you have to have achieved a sense of fairness and balance in your own life beyond yes. you know the starting understanding of love, and you have to be on the path to be a, a healer, actually. Yes, the love actually has to have the the nurturing aspect in within the essence of love because sometimes we we make mistakes in love, we kind of blind ourselves with love and we spoil other people. But the, what is the most important thing in giving love is to make other people to become the person to give love to others, so we can pass on forward. So. Love has to have the nurturing aspect, and and then in order to do that, we need to uh, improve our our wisdom. Mm. So that's what the yes, that's what the stages of yes. love is about. It was written this yes. way, and this is important for our listeners to understand. Nurturing love is an intellectual love, a rational love. You cannot truly guide others unless you have high intelligence to penetrate the true nature of people and society and can take action to treat the main causes of existing problems by using a greater power of reasoning. Now, that's what we're sort of talking about here. You have to do the work. You must be consistent in doing (laughs) the self-investigative work and understand your relationship, what makes you tick, what makes you drawn to certain people, which makes you unable to to be, um, you know, fully engaged with other people. And Mm -hmm. after a while, you learn to see the goodness of all people. Everyone has something within them of this divine nature. And if you look yes. past, you know, as you said before, taking or having mm-hmm. or feeling mm-hmm. that someone is taking something from you, which they yes. they have their own insecurities at times and are mm-hmm. not always functioning at this high level. So there mm-hmm. are different levels and people able to love at different levels. But yes. love is love and we hope. Uh, that people are accepting of themselves first and then yes. of others. Now, we talked about um, in the book, there was a lot on this in the book, uh, about the civilization of Atlantis, yes. Mu, and the past, I don't know how many, how long has humanity <laughs> been yes. on this planet? Uh, well, it, it, it seems like... A, 400 a million kind of years, I, I think 400 <laughs> yes. million years. Yes. So, but yes, but it, those it two a... are very important. If we think mm-hmm. about uh, the ancient civilizations, they're sort of showing us something about what's happening right now, as yes. civilization is changing, because nothing stays the same. That is an, a universal law that there is change and everything mm-hmm. is impermanent. So uh, what do we know about what's happening now, like yes. these ancient civilizations? 
Yes, so what is remarkable about this past civilization is that uh, the people who went through, lived in these past civilizations are not somebody that we don't know, but it's actually us. All ah, of us. yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. All of us went through these civilizations and we are learning lessons. Well, and then we are, you know, we are supposed to not to make the same mistakes in the past. And then I think uh, in Chapter 5 about the ancient civilization, Master Oka talks about our existing current civilization that very much resembles to the one in Atlantis. Yes. Very high in advanced uh, science and technology, and yet people are losing sight of spirituality. So that's are what's we happening going to make now. The... Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, so exactly what's happening. Now. Yes, are we going to make the same mistake or are, can we overcome it by opening our eyes to this spirit world? Because spirituality, because spirituality and science are not divided. There's something that we have tangible uh, equation or tangible uh, evidence that's called science, but something that we don't have the tangible evidence that's called spirituality. It's all in the same sphere. So more uh, loving. Yeah, yeah, I would say, what would you want people to take away with them after reading Laws of the Sun? I, well, I would, because uh, this Lord of the Sun is like a calling from the Creator to each one of the readers, you know, people on this planet. Uh, it's a message to all individuals. And and then the, the secret keys rising within us, how we, we can change our perspective, how we can awaken and then pursue the the happiness that we're supposed to pursue, you know, the right the the right kind of happiness doesn't damage ourselves and damage others. It's a uh, it's in harmony. We need to progress through harmony. So I want to thank you, Reverend Keiko Hoshino, for sharing much of what Master Rayo Okawa wishes to bring to listeners in a way that is uplifting, truthful honorable and helpful so we can once again remember our divine soul essence and connection to universal source which has never been lost only separated from us by the many conflicting views of the physical world which in essence is mostly illusion and inaccurate for the most part to read laws of the sun and the many wonderful books by master ayoho okawa go to okawabooks.com In summarizing today's episode of Healing from Within, we have taken a fresh look at a book written 25 years ago and through time, space, place, and events have changed with greater knowledge of the universal truths that ring clearer within our heart essence always encouraging us to remember and embrace the divine source within that allows us to create and manifest our best life without fear, restriction, or the falseness of other people's opinions and direction. We are free to choose life and love eternally. We also look back on the history of civilizations in the last million years or so that led up to our current civilization, and we notice that they have several traits in common. The following are the five common traits. A civilization always has its rise and fall. God or Buddha always sent the great guiding spirits of light of the highest level of the universe to each civilization. Number three. During the peak of a civilization, when light was at its brightest, evil became fierce. When humankind was covered with clouds of dark thought energy, massive catastrophes inevitably occurred, such as the shifting of the Earth's axis or the sinking of a continent. And number four, a new civilization inherits the traits of the previous civilization, but always seeks a set of values that are of a higher, different standard. 
However, no matter what kind of civilization, it served as a necessary training ground for humans to undergo soul training in the process of reincarnation. This is a fact. We can determine what will come in the future.